The Angular team recently introduced the concept of a resource, which allows us to load asynchronous data and represent the resulting value, and even the error and status states associated with that value with signals. Now, in the release candidate for version 19.2, they have introduced HTTP resource, which is essentially a specialized resource that is specifically for loading data from HTTP endpoints. This results in a simple pattern for loading data, and this also defines a reactive request. So in this case, if the signal it is referencing updates, it will launch a new HTTP request to fetch that data. As well as a basic request with a URL, it is also possible to provide additional configuration, e.g. in the form of a POST request. But keep in mind the intent of a resource is data fetching and loading. So the intended use case for a POST here would be if a POST request was required to load some data, not for sending a request to add a new article to the database or something like that. Another important distinction between this and using HTTP client is that the data will be fetched eagerly, as opposed to a typical get call via HTTP client, which would wait until it is subscribed. So all of this stuff is pretty cool, but it's not actually what I'm most excited about with these changes. I am excited about the addition of a stream option to resources. Let me first show you what the problem was previously. I've published a few videos recently on various aspects of how much RxJS we could potentially replace with signals, where that makes sense, where there are limitations or awkward barriers, and so on. One such limitation we touched on was in trying to use Rx resource for a stream of messages coming from a Firestore backend in one of the example apps for my Angular course. The basic idea is that I have this messages observable and anytime data on the backend changes, this stream will emit a new value. This stream also has a mechanism built in for restarting the stream of data if the user were to become unauthenticated, thus losing their permission to access the data and then later become re-authenticated again. The problem with Rx resource was that it would only take the first value returned from the stream and then it would be unsubscribed, meaning we get an initial set of data, but nothing else after that. The end result here was that I didn't migrate this to use a resource and instead stuck with this approach of having a manual imperative handoff between RxJS and signals. The observable stream is subscribed in the constructor and the signal is updated whenever it emits a value. Another option here would be to use to signal, but the point of this more manual approach is that this sort of reducer step allows accessing any other state directly and in general requires using less advanced RxJS to get things done. This isn't necessarily a good or bad thing, it just depends on the scenario, the team, and so on. However, the situation with Rx resource has changed now. If we take a look at the current implementation of Rx resource, we can see that the subscription is now no longer piped with take one. What is happening here now is that we have this stream signal being created and we have a promise being returned that is resolved with this stream signal. So we have a promise that resolves with a signal and then that signal can continue to be updated by the observable stream emitting over time. We can see that happening as each time the next on the stream is called, we invoke this send function. This send function will set the value into that stream signal that is resolved via the promise. The promise will be resolved the first time send is called, as in after the stream has emitted one value, but the signal that was returned can continue to be updated each time the stream emits a new value. So how does this integrate into this messages and authentication example? Well, we could just keep this RxJS stream as is, but now we could just pass it directly to Rx resource. And then we can just access the value as we would typically with a resource ref. And along with the value signal, we also get the other typical bonuses from a resource like the error signal, the is loading signal, the status signal, and so on. And with this new approach, everything still works fine. We can log out, back in, and the stream retrying functionality works just fine. But we can go one step further here. We also have this functionality that clears messages when the user logs out. We can handle this by adding in the request parameter to our Rx resource, such that the request will be re-triggered every time the authenticated user changes. This will re-trigger the request when the user logs out, clearing the data, but on top of that, it also removes the need to have this retry defined in our RxJS stream at all, as now the stream will just be recreated by Rx resource whenever the user authentication state changes. Now our code is looking a whole lot simpler, but we can go even further. 
I want to draw a clear line in the sand here as I'm not convinced the pattern I'm about to show you is a good idea, but it does result in pretty clean and simple looking code. The main reason this idea is iffy is that it relies on signals to represent actions, which are events, and signals are not designed to be an event management mechanism. As we have discussed in a previous video, which I'll link in the description, managing events is something RxJS is much better suited to. But we only have one instance here now where we are utilizing RxJS directly for managing the state, and that is to handle this add action. When an add is triggered, we react to it via the subscribe in the constructor, which will handle launching the request and if necessary, setting an error into our state signal. Theoretically, I could also use Rx resource to handle this add mutation, which will be triggered in response to a new signal based add action being set with data. This handles the add, and we also get the error state of the request for free now. Notice that I'm setting a custom equality function so that no matter what data the signal is set with, it will always be considered a new value. This is because I'm sort of abusing what signals are intended for here. And on top of that, I am also abusing the intent of a resource by using it for triggering a mutation operation. But if I learned anything from maths, it's that two negatives make a positive, and so I guess that makes this okay. The biggest downside I can see here, aside from the sort of ideological misuse, is that we lose the control RxJS gives us over how to handle situations where multiple actions are triggered before a previous request has finished. For example, it's not unrealistic to expect a user to send a second message before the first has finished being added to the database. What we get by default with this approach, assuming my reading of the source code is correct, is essentially the same as the switch map behavior of RxJS. If a new action is triggered, the previous request will just be canceled and that message would be lost. So again, this last portion of the video has been highly experimental and really flies in the face of the intent of both signals and resources. But also the result in this specific situation at least is pretty nice. It's declarative, clean, easy to read and short. Anyway, let me know what you think. And if you found this video useful, a like or subscribe before you go would be greatly appreciated. Thanks for watching and I hope to see you in the next one.